Hello and welcome back. Today we will see how to use the noise assisted multivariate EMD in MATLAB. The algorithm is exactly the same as for the vanilla multivariate EMD. So if you haven't done it yet, please download the MEMD function published by Rehmann and Mandik. You can find the respective link in the description box, where I've also linked a repository from which you can download all MATLAB files that I use throughout my videos. As usual, we will start by generating synthetic data. This has the advantage that we know exactly what we expect from the output of the algorithm and we are able to validate its performance. Fs is the sampling frequency that we set to 500 Hz and L is the total length of our data. From these predefined quantities, we can construct our time vector t. We have two additional time instants, t1 and t2, that you can of course vary, um, which indicate where we will apply sudden changes to our data. So in contrast to the previous MATLAB examples, in which we simply used continuous sine waves, we will now include some unsteadiness in our data to make it a bit more complex and more realistic. Next, we define the properties of the sine waves, which are frequency and amplitude. We will combine three different waves, so we specify three frequency values f1 to f3 and three amplitudes a. Then we combine them to three different signals. The first signal or channel is a very simple continuous sine wave with f1 and a1. The first part of the second signal has the same frequency but a different amplitude a2. However, at the time step t1, its frequency suddenly changes to f2 while keeping the amplitude constant. And for the third signal, we increase the complexity even more. So the first part has the same frequency as the second part of signal 2, but with a different amplitude. Then at t2, we add a new sine wave with a third frequency. So we don't just have the sudden change in frequency, but additionally a superposition of two sine waves. Okay, uh, we also need to specify some parameters for the noise assisted MEMD algorithm. We set the number of projection directions to 64 and specify uh, three threshold values for the stopping criterion. Since we will use the standard criterion that I also explained in the theoretical video about the MEMD function. Since we will generate random noise for the noise assistance, we include a fixed seed for random number generation to ensure a reproducibility of our results. And for the variance of the Gaussian noise, we say that it measures 5% of the variance of the data. As usual, you can play around um, with all of these predefined values to get an intuition for their impact. Then um, I also define some colors because I don't like the default MATLAB colors, but this is of course optional. The script includes a for loop, which progressively increases the number of noise channels we use during the decomposition. Okay, at first the noise is generated. Therefore, we create a matrix of random numbers that has as many rows as the number of noise channels and as many columns as the length of our signals. For now, the values are in the range from minus one to one with zero mean. But since we want to have a specific variance, we scale the noise data with respect to the variance of the original data. Then we simply concatenate the original data and the newly generated noise data to a new matrix. To see what kind of data we have generated, we display it before we proceed with the decomposition. I use the tired layout option with a for loop that adapts to the changing data size to plot all three signals and the noise channels in one big figure. The for loop looks like this and basically includes the plotting of each individual signal. If we are using only one noise channel, the resulting figure looks like this. If you have watched my video about the noise assisted MEMD, you might recognize that I used exactly the same data. And for example, um, in variates 2 and 3, you can clearly see the sudden changes that we apply to the data's frequency. Using two noise channels, the figure would look like this, and I'm sure that you can imagine how it will change with more noise channels. 
Okay, now comes the fun part. We apply the decomposition function to the data. At first, the data, including the noise channels, is passed to the function, followed by the number of projection directions that we specified above. Then we have to tell the function that we want to use the standard stopping criterion, which is done by setting the criterion to stop. Um, the three threshold values that are needed for the stopping criterion are stored in the vector stop grid. Um, more details and variations of using this MEMD function are described in the documentation of the function itself, and please check it out if you're interested. We call the output of the MEMD function IMFs underscore NR, um, and surely uh, we plot the modes to inspect how well the decomposition works. Depending on the number of noise channels, the mode numbers um, of interest change. And I include this if clause here to specify which modes we like to visualize depending on the number of noise channels that are used in the current iteration of the governing for loop. Then we have an inner for loop for the individual uh, subplots of each variate. It basically plots the modes of interest for each uh, variate using an additional for loop. Of course, we do not plot the IMFs of the noise channels, since this data was only relevant to impose the noise characteristics onto the modes of the original data, and its modes uh, can be neglected after the decomposition. With increasing number of noise channels, the resulting IMFs look like this. Since I've already used this synthetic data within the theoretical video about the NRMEMD, and explain the findings for a varying number of noise channels, I will not go into detail here. But what we essentially see is that a single noise channel is insufficient to provide a clear separation between the modes. This is also true for zero noise channels, which means that we simply use the MEMD without noise assistance. Using two noise channels, however, um, provides a very good decomposition, which is slightly improved by adding more noise channels. But of course, an increasing number of noise channels comes with a higher computational cost, and for very large data sets, a compromise um, might be necessary between efficiency and accuracy. What this result um, reveals is that even for this still quite simple synthetic data that we have used, the MEMD without noise assistance fails at providing a meaningful decomposition. That means that if you are having real-world data, which is usually much more complex than the data we just used, you should definitely apply the noise-assisted MEMD to check if this improves your decomposition. I hope this video helped you in understanding how to apply the noise-assisted multivariate EMD in MATLAB, and if there are remaining questions, just let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and hope to see you soon. Bye!